Hi there. In the last video, we got this sort of unwieldy expression um, on the top here on way to proving that least squared estimators are in fact unbiased uh, under the assumption of the Gauss-Markov conditions. So let's now sort of think about each term in this above expression. So this first term here, the sort of uh, the term with alpha in it, we can write out as that being equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar times alpha p, which is equal to, if I sort of multiply out this parenthesis, that's equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi alpha p and minus x bar and alpha p, uh, sorry, alpha p times the sum of 1 from i equals 1 to n, where in the sort of second term here, I have used the fact that neither alpha p nor xi have any summation indices, so I can in fact just take them outside of the summation. Okay, so what does this term equal? Well, if I sum 1 n times, I just get n, and similarly for this first term here, because alpha p does not actually have any summation indices, I can take it outside of the summation, so I'm just left with the sum of xi. But we know that the definition of x bar is that it's equal to the sum of xi divided by n. So if I sort of take that n up here, I know that the sum of xi is just equal to n x bar. So that's going to enable me to write out this expression a bit easier. So that's just equal to n x bar um, times alpha p minus n x bar alpha p, which obviously both of these things are the same, so that's zero. So this first term at the top disappears. Okay, let's now think about the second term here. So the second term, which is this sort of xi minus x bar times xi times p to p, if I write that one out explicitly, that's the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar times xi. Well, the sort of p to p doesn't have any summation indices, so I can take that outside. And I'm dividing this whole thing through by SSX on the bottom here. Okay, well, in fact, it can be shown that... Um, this term on the top here can be written xi minus x bar um, times xi minus x bar, which is exactly the same thing as the bottom. So um, b to, this whole term just becomes b to p. Uh, if you don't understand where we have managed or how we've managed to do this sort of magic here, um, then you can go back and look at some of the other videos because um, I explain this sort of step in detail. Okay, so we have got this sort of second term here, it's just equal to b, to b to p, and so we're just left with this final term here, which is we've got the sum of um, i equals 1 to n of um, xi minus x bar all times ui. And actually, um, before we take expectations, we can't actually change this last term, so we're just going to leave this last term as it is. So... I hope you can sort of see that we've greatly simplified this sort of mess at the top here and we've got sort of beta hat being equal to um, beta p because this sort of term involving alpha p has disappeared plus um, we've got the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all times ui divided by sxx. Cool, so remember what we're trying to do, we're trying to prove that uh, least squared estimator um, of the population parameter beta is unbiased. So to prove unbiasedness, we have to take expectations. So taking the expectations of both sides, we have that the expectation of beta hat is equal to, well, the expectation of beta p is just beta p because it's just a number. A number doesn't have any sort of, it's not a random variable, it's just always equal to what it is, beta p plus, and um, we can now write this sort of right-hand side term as being equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of the expectation of xi minus x bar um, times ui, all divided by ssx, because ssx is just a number, it just contains sort of x terms, so we already know that. Um, and then we need to think about this sort of final term here, the sort of expectation of xi minus x bar times ui. Well... The assumption of zero conditional mean of errors, which is that the expectation of ui um, should be completely independent of xi and equal to zero, means that we can write this stuff on the bottom a lot simpler. We can just write this as the expectation of beta hat is equal to beta p and plus the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar 
um, times the expectation of UI, all divided by SSX. But because of this zero conditional mean of, so, so in actually I should, I should mention that to write, to go from this step to this step, we've actually used the fact that errors are independent of our um, independent variables X, because um, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do this. And then finally, using the fact that we know that the errors are not only uh, independent, but their expectation is equal to zero, and this term vanishes, and we're left with that the expectation of beta hat is equal to beta p. In the next video, we're going to start to derive the standard error in beta hat, which is going to allow us to make inferences about the population. I'll see you then.